Boruto chapter 78 was one of the better chapters of this current arc and I was very surprised to see that they finally did the one major thing that's kind of kind of lead up to the time skip in this chapter. You know, we talk about the time skip all the time, but I didn't realize that the time skip would be happening this soon. But in this chapter, Kawaki and Boruto finally face off once again and things don't really go Boruto's way or Kawaki's way for the most part. And just to, you know, jump into this chapter and start talking about it, we got to go forward to the main attraction of this chapter, and that is when Boruto got the scar. I made a video, I originally thought it was going to be either Code or Kawaki, but it makes sense that it is Kawaki because I feel like when things like a scar happen for a character, they're more symbolic and it's usually meant for something else. In this scenario, Boruto got a scar protecting Sarada. You know, if you look at other scenarios like Kashi getting a scar for protecting his teammates during that mission, there's always some sort of meaningful connection to why they've gotten that scar. If Code had given Boruto the scar, I don't think it would have hit as hard, but I guess it really just depends on the situation, right? So not mad that Kawaki gave Boruto the scar, but you can really see that Kawaki means business and that he has full intent on actually killing Boruto. But there are some things in this Kawaki fight to where when they're fighting, it seems like Kawaki isn't as overpowered as we originally thought, right? Because Kawaki has these super fast rods that he can throw out, but those weren't thrown out at all during this fight. And we can kind of assume that based on some of Shikamaru's comments is that eventually Kawaki is going to run out of chakra and that's when they're going to get the jump on him. Because Kawaki has been probably spamming all those abilities, shrinking, summoning cues and all that stuff, he's kind of running out of chakra now, right? During the fight with Boruto, he has some of some cubes and whatnot, but there were some instances to where if he wanted to, like in the first fight, he could have did the rods, but he was unable to due to the circumstances. So I do like that aspect that they kind of show that, hey, right now, Kawaki's not the best at maintaining his chakra and, you know, the abilities that he's using to shrink and whatnot are draining him a lot. Going back to the whole fight thing with Sarada jumping in, you know, with the scar, I want to address that. You know, it seems like Sarada is going to play more of a role into the story. I'm really hoping that they give Sarada some more importance. And I hope that her seeing Boruto getting the scar is going to give her that drive to be stronger and be the Hokage that she wants to be in the future. Because as of now, when Boruto got the scar, a lot of the criticism right now is that Sarada didn't really put up much of a fight, right? But also, you know, good counter argument for that is this is a very strange scenario. Based on her previous knowledge, she thought Ko was the one that tried to kill Boruto, not Kawaki. So I can imagine she's not really on 10 right now. She doesn't actually think that Kawaki has full intent on killing Boruto. So she's very confused in this moment, I can imagine. However, now that the scar has finally happened, I think Sarada realizes the extent of the situation and is going to take this seriously so i'm really excited to see what sarada can put on the table and if she gets any potential powers from this same thing with miski miski is also here as well and he seems like he is not taking kawaki for a joke so things are ramping up right now and these characters are finally getting some more spotlight and they're finally being taken more seriously also something else got confirmed which i want to talk about was that dimension that naruto and hinatu were in i had thought that whatever dimension they're getting put in is going to be a dimension where time doesn't flow and where the theory for me was really reinforced was when Kawaki and Koda originally started fighting, I think there was something mentioned of a dimension where time doesn't flow. And I was like, okay, they're kind of hinting at Ashiki's dimension, right? And I was correct. So this dimension is where Hinata and Naruto are and they're not gonna starve or even age at all. So very interesting that he picked that in particular. The downside of Kawaki putting them there is that if Kawaki dies at any point in time, Who's going to get them, right? Because it's a separate dimension, so I'm not sure if Boruto has the capabilities to access that dimension. I don't know if you need to have the dojutsu that Ashiki has to even get inside there. So it's a little tricky, right? We need Kawaki to actually open that dimension up if we want to get Naruto and Hinata out. And also, Kawaki made an interesting comment about, I wish I could just throw you in this dimension that Naruto and Hinata are in. Kind of preluding to the fact that in Boruto episode one, he also mentioned that I'll send you where 
where I sent the seventh. Maybe a possible reason that Boruto and Kawaki are fighting is that Kawaki still wants to put him in this dimension or kill him, right? Either of those options he's okay with. Kawaki just doesn't want any more Osuskis roaming around. Also, finally getting the return of Sasuke. I'm so glad that Sasuke is making a return into the story. Sasuke putting a sword up to Kawaki, saying that he will kill him if he moves. Sasuke is trying to at least take some reasonable measures. Because of Momoshiki, Sasuke lost his grip on Kawaki and now they're gonna have to chase after Kawaki again. So, you know, that's unfortunate, but Sasuke seems like he's fully ready to take on Kawaki. And I honestly think with the forces that they have right now, they might have a decent chance to fight back against Kawaki because Inuyo is very powerful. Like I said before, he does not have the chakra reserves to handle that many people. So I think if Sasuke has a chance to, he'll actually be able to take down Kawaki. And I don't think Sasuke is gonna die anytime soon. I think that they're gonna kind of change their pivot because I remember it seemed like Naruto was gonna die there in that whole Kurama thing, but it seems, but but somehow he lived and now with Sasuke, we've been kind of thinking he's gonna die because of the time skip, but just due to the views that Sasuke and Naruto bring in, they're not gonna kill these two for a long time. So if anything, I think Sasuke is just going to be injured for the meantime. And finally, before I get to Momoshiki, gotta talk about Amato real quick. Amato seems very concerned that Kawaki is on the run again and doesn't really know what he's going to do. I think Amato is very close to unveiling his big plan. Not sure what that is yet, but it's very concerning, right? Because Amato needs Kawaki for the he's planning and that's going to happen very soon. Jumping to Momoshiki to kind of wrap things up. Momoshiki doing the big brain plan of letting Kawaki go and absorbing the shadow position due to. Seems like Momoshiki still wants to sacrifice Kawaki to the Ten Tails and still needs to have things go his way. Saying that, okay, you've lost your blue eye, but you're still going to lose more things to Boruto. So Momoshiki seems to have full control of the story right now and it's, it's kind of manipulating Boruto to put things into action. So Momoshiki being the ultimate villain and moving the chess pieces to how he likes it. So things go according to plan. But overall, I think this was a great chapter. Finally getting to see Boruto's scar. I imagine the Jogan is going to come pretty soon. And I think that we're going to see a full on fight between all of these characters against Kawaki. And I'm kind of excited to see that. Also, we'd like to see what Naruto and Hinata are doing for at least a panel or two. Maybe see some of that insight and perspective. Anyway, do you guys think that Kawaki may end up killing Sasuke? And do you possibly see Sarada getting some sort of power up in these next couple of chapters? Anyways, make sure you leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and join the Discord. And I will see you later. Peace. Sing. 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 Sing.